All right, this is a very brief video going over the concept of inserting a table, but using existing text on the screen. So you can do this a couple of ways. I have two examples here. Um, the first one, I just separated them by commas. So notice that I have a name, a comma, and then a space like you would normally do, an age, a comma, and a space, um, some sort of like health issue, comma, space, and gender, okay? Now let's say that in this table, some of these people don't have a health issue. We still have to put the comma there for the blank column. If we don't, then you know female's gonna be in the wrong spot, for example. I'll do one that's wrong at the bottom. So let's say Elaine 70, and let's just put female because you know she doesn't have any health issues. The proper way to do that would be to put a comma that's empty. Okay, so I'm going to do this one wrong just so you can see it. All right, once you have it all typed in there, you just select it all with your mouse and you go to the insert menu. And then under table is an option for convert text to table. Okay, when you click on that, this convert text to table thing comes up and it's going to look at your commas because it should kind of realize there's commas. So it says separate text at commas. So like it knows there's commas there. So it automatically chose commas. but you could say separate text at tabs, which is what I've done here on the bottom, or other. Maybe you have like dashes between them. So you can specify that. How many columns? This is going to be four, and it just figured that out for us. But, you know, if for some reason it didn't, you could change that. And then auto fit behavior. So right now it's set to fixed column width. So every one of these columns is going to be exactly the same width. Unless I switch it to something else. So if I do auto fit to contents, it's going to look different. I'll undo and show you what that looks like. Okay, I'm just going to do this with the settings. Remember, this bottom one is wrong, okay? Hit OK. All right, and then see what happens here. It skipped and left a column for these, or left a cell for these. But this one, female's in the wrong spot because I didn't leave that comma with a blank, okay? So now I'll just delete this row because I don't need it, and all will be well with the world. But let's back up to before all of this and go back to the insert table options. And this time, let's choose auto fit to contents. And you can tell me here what's happening. Okay, so now notice what auto fit to contents is. So before it went all the way across the page and every single column, all four were exactly the same width. This way, they're not. It looks at the longest entry in each column and it makes that column that way, okay? And so that's how that one would be. I'm going to delete this row again and get rid of it. Okay, so anyway, pretty simple, nice, easy way to pop a table in there. Um, now, here's another one, same concept here. All I did was just use the default tabs at every half inch, and I just tabbed over. Cat meow annoying, dog bark loud, mouse squeak dumb, fish, and let's say fish don't make a sound, so we leave the empty tab there, and then we go to the next one. So same concept, highlight, insert table. Uh, convert text to table, and then this one automatically knew that it was separated at tabs. And again, if I set the column with the auto, this is going to go all the way across, like so. <laughs> you know, or you can undo it and then decide, you know, is there a different option that you might like better? Of course, you're doing projects in the textbook. It's probably going to tell you. Um, but if we do auto fit to contents, this can be much smaller, like so. All right. And that's basically it. That is the concept of using text to table in Word.